friends, we now invite you to join us for the Animation Academy. Please welcome your sketch artist, Matthew DeWater. Everybody. Wow, cool. I was afraid it was going to be too chilly to have a good turnout, but this is great. Welcome. Welcome to the uh, Animation Academy. Um, welcome to the Festival of the Arts. Welcome to the 50th anniversary of Walt Disney World. We've got a lot of good stuff going on here today. Um, my name is Matt, and I will be your artist today. I, uh, I'm an artist for the Disney Creative Group, character artist. Um, and uh, basically that means we do a little bit of everything. We, uh, you may have seen some of my artwork on some merchandise here at the parks, um, at the events like Run Disney or stuff. And if you haven't been on a Disney cruise, we do artwork for a little bit of everything. So it's uh, really cool that I get to be here today to, uh, to teach the Animation Academy. And, and when they asked me to come do this, I was really excited to get to pick the, uh, the characters that we were going to do. And so some of the ones that are most near and dear to my heart are the classic, classic Walt Disney films um, from, you know, the 30s, 40s, 50s that we all grew up on. And so today we're going to be drawing Thumper from Bambi. Any Thumper fans out here? Yes? Very good? All right. So I am going to sit down and we are going to get started. Now, uh, whenever I teach class, I always like to point out a couple things. You'll notice that the, the pencils that you have um, don't have any erasers. Uh, neither does mine. Now, that's not to say that we don't make mistakes. It's not to say that I don't make mistakes. I do all day long, every day. Um, but it's just to say, for the sake of our purposes today, uh, draw lightly, okay? Draw nice and light so that when we do make mistakes, we can go in and kind of go over it and, and fix it as we go. Um, also, one other note. I don't know if you can see it up on here on the screen, but down here, under, under here, I have a little bit of uh, reference. Um, I always like to bring reference. And so here's my model sheet. This is one of the model sheets that the animators used um, when they worked on the movie. And uh, so I always like to bring some reference. And even, you know, when I'm doing work, work, when I, you know, I'm drawing at work, I always use reference. Even if it's a character that I've drawn a thousand times um, and I could do it in my sleep, still like to have reference so that we can always keep these characters as consistent as, as uh, possible. And uh, one time when I was teaching a class, I, I, had, um, I, I showed my model sheet that I brought with me, and, and like a kid in the front row went, cheater! And uh, so I'm here to tell you that that is not the case. Every professional artist I've ever um, worked with uses, uses some reference. And, uh, you know, as long as you're not just straight up copying and trying to pass it off as your own. Um, basically, it's just a way to make your life easier as, as an artist and, and to keep things um, consistent to make sure he's looking right. Uh, so, with that, we're going to jump in. Um, like I said, start light. And if you've ever done a, a drawing of a Disney character before, whether it's you know, from a How to Draw book or one of our classes here, you'll know that a lot of characters start with a circle for the head. So that's what we're going to start with. Now, keep in mind that this is Thumper. So we want to leave room for his big old ears up top. So I'm going to draw his, his circle for his head kind of towards the bottom. Not too big. Leave some room for the big cheeks, for the big ears. Let's see, am I drawing dark enough? I'll go a little bit darker. Okay, and we've got our basic circle for the head, and like I said, this is just a guideline to show us kind of where things are going to go. This won't necessarily be seen in the, the final, final drawing. And same with these. These are our guidelines. So I'm just going to do a light, straight line down the middle, and a straight line across through the middle. And that's how most of our characters start just to give us some placement for how to get started. And now I'm going to start, before I start really doing the features, I'm just going to get the shapes in there. So I'm going to start with his big old cheeks. And they come right here from about each, uh, each corner. Well, there's no corner to a circle, of course. Um, but the, the intersection between the, the guideline and the circle, and I'm going to come out here and 
just do his big old cheeks. And they come down further than the circle. And it's just a big curved line. And keep it light so that when we get a little further and we decide, oh, well, those cheeks should be a little bit puffier or rounder or it needs to come down a little bit further, we can do that. Okay, and I'll just mirror it on the other side there. It comes all the way down. Okay, so those are big cheeks. And I'm just going to put a circle, kind of, well, not a circle, but an oval right in the middle that comes down to where we just did those cheeks. It goes past the outside of that first circle that we drew and overlaps. So we have an oval right there in the middle. Okay, and that kind of, you can start to see a bunny in there, right? Just get the basic shapes in there. So now I'm going to come in here and start adding some of these features. Now Dumbo's got these big, cute eyes. So I'm going to start using that uh, middle guy line as kind of the bottom of his eyes. You can go a little further under the, for the eyes, but it's basically just an oval. And it doesn't quite touch the top of that circle, but almost that whole way. Got nice big cute eyes. So one oval on that side, and just mirror it over on the other side. Okay, and you'll see me kind of back up and take a look and come back in and, and adjust as I go. Um, well, right now I'm not, uh, not necessarily darkening it up. Um, but just kind of adjusting that oval so that I get the shape that I want. But uh, yeah, we can go in here and, um, you know, his top lid is going to be a little bit darker. So you can do that right now, speaking of it. Just darken up his, his top lid, eye lid. And just along the top and down, you know, a little bit of the size just to give an indication that that eyeball is sitting inside the head. Whoops! The pencil just broke. Let's see here. So, fun fact about Thumper, while I'm sharpening my pencil. Um, Thumper was originally uh, a much smaller part in Bambi. He, uh, his name was Bobo. And he was one of a few other kind of supporting characters. Um, Flower the Skunk, of course, is still in there, but there's also a, uh, a grasshopper. And honestly, I don't, I'm not sure if I know what the grasshopper's name was, but um, it's kind of this cranky, ornery grasshopper. And you can actually see him in some of the deleted scenes on the bonus features, the, the DVD or. I don't know, it might be on Disney Plus. Um, and so they all kind of had just equal screen time of, of that, those first scenes when Bambi's just being born. And uh, when they saw the test screen of Thumper interacting with Bambi, Walt Disney said, forget the grasshopper, he's not, it's, we don't need that. Make Thumper one of the main characters. And so, of course, today, you know, Thumper is a lot of people's favorite character in the movie. So. Walt Disney had good taste, to say the least. Let's see. So now we're going to do his pupils. Okay, now, Thumper's a super cute bunny, so we're going to give him some big, giant pupils in here. It's just a circle, and it, that circle kind of favors the inside of the eye towards the nose. See that? So I didn't draw quite the full circle. 
because that edge is just being hidden by the oval. And we leave a bit of the white of the eye on this side over here. And that way, he doesn't look too cross-eyed. Okay, we're going to mirror that on the other side. in here and start defining his cheeks a little bit now. Thumper is a happy bunny. Well, most of the time. When he's not giving his mom a little bit of attitude. So I'm going to come in here and push his cheeks up right against his eyes. And that's just two curved lines right underneath. really push those cheeks right up against his eyes like that. And I'll come in here for the nose, and it's almost towards the top of that oval that we drew. And it's kind of a, think of an upside down trapezoid, but with rounded corners. So you want to keep everything kind of nice and soft and round. That's what's going to make a character feel cuter, feel appealing. That word appealing is always an animator's best friend. You know, it's, it's getting the character just right isn't even the most important thing. The most important thing is that the drawing is appealing. Okay, we'll come in here with his upper lip. Okay, it's basically just two U's. Okay, right on that oval that we drew, right into the middle guideline, up to his nose. Just like that. It's kind of like a W. And on each side, and it goes back up into his nose. While we're up here, I'm going to do a couple other little wrinkles right here towards the top of his nose. He's always doing that kind of scrunching up his nose, right? So I'm going to draw just a couple curved lines here, one on either side and one just above his nose to give him that scrunched up look. And now he isn't Thumper without his big buck tooth. Now, we want to put it just a little bit off kilter. Okay, it's not right in the middle. A little off to the side there. And it's just another kind of a kind of a U shape. It comes down like that. And I'll use the bottom of that. <laughs> oval that we drew, and I'm going to just darken up, it's that same line, I'm just going to darken a portion of it, and that's going to be his bottom lip, right there. <coughs> and then we'll draw his lip in, and just following that same curve, and it connects to those U shapes of his top lip. Just like that. Okay. And I think I'll put his tongue in here. You don't see much of it, but just a curved line to indicate his tongue back there. Simple curved line underneath his is the uh, Tooth. All right, we're getting it. We don't want to forget his mask. Now we call the the white portion that goes around his eyes and his cheeks. We call that his mask, same as Mickey 
So following the eye line, you go right from the base of the nose, and you just follow that around right to the top of the head, and back down towards his cheek. And same on the other side. Follow that curve up, right to the top of his head, and it comes back around to his cheek. Okay, and then it's going to curve around, and you're adding an extra line for the mask. It's not quite at the edge of that cheek, but almost there. So it just follows that same curve. Same thing on this side, follow the mask down. It follows the same curve, almost, not all the way to the bottom, but. Okay. Now one more thing before we get to his ears in there. We're gonna add some tufts of cute little fur right at his cheeks. So follow this. This is a good time to darken the, the top of his head. So you can follow that line down to where it was. And then on each side, I'm just going to add maybe like one, two, maybe do a third one. Just little tufts of fur right there in the corner. darken up the rest of that cheek and connect it back with the mask line that we just did. Okay, I'll do the same on the other side. I'll darken this. And I'll put two. And now everything doesn't always have to be symmetrical. We'll do another one here. And maybe it's pointing in a different direction from the other ones, just to give them a little more personality. And finish that line all the way to the lip. Okay. And the last thing to do now is those big old ears. Now, what makes Thumper look like Thumper is that he's got one ear that's lopsided, right? So. We're going to start with an ear that is not lopsided. And we'll go over here and basically curve up and curve back down. It's got a little bit of a, not a point, I don't want to call it a point, but just a little bit of a break in the line there that curves back down. Okay, so that ear's kind of sticking straight up. I'm going to come in here and give it a little bit of a fold. So it feels more natural. Just bring that straight back into the side of the head. Okay. And on this other ear, I'm going to take about halfway up. Same thing on the other side, but then I'm going to whoop, fold it right over. It's always flopped over. Fold it in on itself, curves around, and then connect it back in the head with a line that goes and kind of shows the underside of his ear there. And it goes right back into his head, just like the other side. Just kind of a last uh, cleaning up step here. I'll come in here and add a little bit of shading. My color in the eyes, color in the mouth a little bit. And as I'm talking here, I just like to 
keep going over those lines that I like and I darken up the ones where I feel good about it. I come in and adjust what needs adjusting. And speaking of uh, fun facts for uh, Thumper, a lot of you probably know this, but um, when, when the artists were working on Bambi, um, it was the first, so they had done Dumbo uh, previously. They already worked on Dumbo. Um, but that was a lot more uh, stylized and cartoony, right? Um, so there was a lot of liberties taken with some of those animals. And more so even than just Dumbo's big ears. But with Bambi, it was all about studying nature and getting things to look as, as uh, realistic as possible. And still keeping it you know, within that Disney style, but uh, they wanted the anatomy of Bambi and, and all his friends to be correct. They wanted it to be real, real life anatomy. So Walt Disney brought in um, the actual animals to the studio, and there's, there's pictures of it online you can look at with a deer right there at the animator's desk, and they're all like in a room together with all these animals there running around the studio. And um, so they did some, some life drawings of the animals so that they could capture uh, those likenesses before they started doing the actual character designs. And I think that's what lends Bambi so much of that, that weight that makes it feel like we, we're coming into this real forest that, that actually exists somewhere, um, rather than this is a Disney cartoon. Right? And, and both of those things are, are perfectly great. You know, Dumbo's an amazing movie, too. But Bambi just has this different kind of quality to it that um, I think is largely due to that. And so with that, we've got Thumper. So how do we feel about it? Go okay? Yeah, good? Cool. All right, well, um, so for any of you Bambi fans, in the audience, we are going to have another class at 1.30, and I'm going to be drawing Bambi. So he's a little bit more difficult, um, it's going to take a little, little bit longer, um, but I would love to see you back here for another class, and uh, with that, I will let you go. I hope you have a great rest of your day here at Epcot, and uh, exits are going to be behind you to the other side. Thank you guys so much for joining Friends, thank you for joining us for this presentation of the Animation Academy. We hope you enjoy the rest of your day here at the Epcot International Festival of the Arts.